come here with a dream to beat the Las Vegas odds. They gamble with horsepower, but the only dealer they have to outsmart is the desert. Only one will win the race. They call the jackpot. Time now to ante up. The score trophy truck racers are about to play their hands in the Las Vegas Prim 300. <laughs> Nevada, hot, rugged, and the scene of the Las Vegas Prim 300 for the score trophy trucks. Whether you come by I-15 or the Union Pacific, I guarantee you the excitement here will top anything on the strip. The score trophy trucks are about to attack this rugged terrain with a combination of stratospheric horsepower and state-of-the-art suspension. Unlike the casinos where anyone can hit a jackpot, out here there will be just one winner and he'll have to do a whole lot more than pull the handle on a slot machine. Actually, it's more like pulling a pin on a hand grenade, Dave, a 5,000-pound hand grenade. Trophy trucks are the heaviest, biggest, fastest, most exotic equipment you'll ever find in the desert. What it takes to move that two and a half tons across a desert floor is horsepower, lots of it. In here, you've got 460 cubic inches, over 750 horsepower, that'll make this truck scoot like a dancer. Having horsepower is one thing, but converting it to motion over the desert floor is what trophy truck racing is really all about. The way trophy trucks do it is through their drive line and their suspension system. As an example, the rear tires on this truck have an arc or a travel of over 40 inches from top to bottom. In fact, you can see on the panel, the inner panel here, you can see where this truck has been smacking its tire against itself as it goes completely compressed. That's the muscle. What it takes to control all that is the driver. That's his job. The driver that's done it best so far this season, with two consecutive wins, is Robbie Gordon. Now the whole field entered here today is hoping to see that win streak end right here in Las Vegas. Robbie who? No, we don't have to worry about beating him. He's got to worry about beating us. Mechanically is how we beat him. He's got the best equipment, but things do happen. I mean, engines do blow up. He's tough, there's no doubt. He always has been, always will be, but, but I think we can beat him. If he has a small problem, he becomes unnerved and starts to drive a little bit over his head, over the equipment. So I think Robbie's going to take care of himself. Well, I think it's time we heard from that guy on that win streak. Robbie, there's a lot of guys out there in that field that are hoping you end your win streak right here in Las Vegas. Well, you know, we, we, we talked about it at the beginning of the season after we won Parker, and, and we said we're going to keep going until they hate us. Um, they're going to they're gonna be so sick of us. So we're doing everything we can do to keep it exactly the same what we did at Parker and what we did at San Felipe. The guys are, are just doing a dynamite job prepping this Ford truck, and, um, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to getting into Vegas. Now the action is about to start here at the State Line Casino Complex. The Las Vegas Prim 300 being brought to you by Toyota. Our minds are always racing. We're back in the desert, dawn, outside state line as we prepare to drop the rag and go racing. But before we do that, let's take a look at the battleground on which these guys will compete. Bob Bauer, tell me about the course. It's going to be a long, dusty race for these guys. There's three laps of this yellow going clockwise, and then the one long lap will incorporate the yellow and the white. It should be a very tough, tough deal because there's not going to be any time for mistakes. Dust, dust. Dust. If you want to sum it up in three words, here's a guy who doesn't have to worry about the dust, at least initially. First truck off the line, young Jason Baldwin, 23 years old, out of Newport Beach, California, and a guy who seems ready to go out and win a race. He really is. He's had some tremendous finishes last year, both seconds, and he's always in a hunt. His, his time is due. This is an independent organization. This is a family operation, and they run hard, and they run fast. He's in a great position to do well. A little bit of a spectator area here that has been laid out near the start. Grandstands packed even early in the morning. 
as we watch Marty Coyne come to the line. Now, Marty's an interesting guy. He's a motorcycle dealer in Lemon Grove, California. Makes his money selling bikes and has his fun racing trucks. He does have fun, David. This thing's got an enormous engine, 660 cubic inches. It's not a state-of-the-art truck. He bought it from Robbie Gordon about three years ago, and he does a very decent job of getting it around the course against some tough competition. To get that thing out on the flat, unleash all the horsepower. That thing is fun to watch. Let's go to the third starter. This is Tim Herbst. The Herbst brothers are from Las Vegas, and if you've driven that neck of the woods, you know the terrible Herbst Oil Company, all those service stations out there along the highway. Well, this terrible Herbst Ford used to be the the other wheel for it. They bought it from Jimmy Smith, who won the 1994 Baja 1000 in it, so it's a proven piece. And they are no strangers to the desert. The Hertz brothers have been racing buggies for a number of years and know how to get around this Las Vegas desert. Let's go on to the Ford Rough Rider team. Paul Simon and his brother Dave out of Fallbrook, California. And these guys looking for some good fortune after the difficulties they had in the last show at San Felipe. Well, they're going to be trying to chase Robbie down, and they know it. Everyone's up against Robbie in this race. The racers love to watch the Simons because they go hard at it. Robbie, of course, would be Robbie Gordon. We've already met him. You'll have to wait a while to see him leave. He's deep in the field. Here's Kurt Leduc, and this is an interesting vehicle. This is the only Jeep in the field, the Grand Cherokee. It's a couple of years old. The technology, not exactly state-of-the-art. The remarkable thing is the pressure that he puts on the guys up front. Well, Kurt is a wily racer, and he preps this thing himself. He's got it dialed in so well that, you know, it, it, by all rights, it shouldn't be able to do as well as it does. But Kurt and the team, who won on a really tight budget, get the most out of their machine. I'll never tell Kurt it won't keep up. Here's Larry Raglan. Winner last year of the Baja 1000, all the way to La Paz, a significant honor in off-road racing, but he's had tough luck in two races this year. He really has. Now, I want you to notice that this engine is in the center of that truck. You see those headers? That's, it's, it's in there just like a boat engine is in a, in a V-drive situation. Raglan, of course, driving the Chevrolet, Chevy versus Ford versus Toyota, a big element here. Jeff Lewis. Comes out of San Clemente, California, in another Chevy. First year for Jeff in trophy truck racing. In fact, this particular race truck is not a trophy truck because the one they're building is not quite done. It promises to be an innovation technically because it's going to be an all-wheel drive truck. Jeff's up against it here because this is a really fast, fast course that favors the technology of trophy truck suspension. And the Class 8 that this used to be doesn't have that suspension. So he'll be hustling, trying to keep up with the likes of Rob McCackard, the famous parking lot attendant who was dubbed by one of the... Uh, legendary owners of this sport to drive a race truck and ended up being the inaugural champion of the trophy truck series well he is a champion a lot of experience this truck doesn't have a lot of experience it's only the third race for it you're still sorting out the little bugs and gremlins that happen but i'll tell you he's going to be busting butt to do his very level best with this fast fast truck a lot of heavy hitters deep in the field ivan stewart the legendary 50 year old off-road hero of so many years Driving the Toyota, the little nimble truck against the high horsepower heavy hitters. He's had some tough luck this year as well. Well, he has. He's had a few little bobbles here and there. But in this race, actually, the Toyota's at a kind of a disadvantage because there's so many long straightaways where the horsepower that are in these big V8s can overtake that Toyota. Speaking of horsepower, here's the man, Robbie Gordon, undefeated in two outings this year. The IndyCar racer from Buena Park, California, who loves to get back here to his roots. The racing in the desert. Well, you just got to love Robbie. You know, the odds are that he can't win three in a row because that's never been done in trophy truck racing. But the other thing is, is that Robbie hasn't had a chance to pre-run to get to learn this course. So it's going to really kind of tax his talent to get around without a mistake. Big disadvantage for him to be starting in the back. Riding shotgun on the field. The 11th starter is Javier Espinosa, who runs a little airline down in Baja. Comes from Ensenada, which is the starting point for the 500 and loves to come to the States to do his thing. This little S10 is the only other V6 in the field, so he may be at a bit of a disadvantage with the big V8s, but Javier does his very level best to go fast and hard. So the race is on, 11 trucks at the crack of dawn take to the desert outside State Line, Nevada, and this is the leader off the line, young Jason Ball. No dust to contend with, we'll see how long he can milk that advantage when we come back with more.
We're back in the desert, the Las Vegas Prim 300 for the score trophy trucks. And this is Jason Baldwin, who by my perhaps naive assessment should be going flat out across the desert. And that looks like less than flat out to me. What's up? Well, we picked up some radio traffic and uh, apparently there's something going on in the fuel injection. They think that uh, this truck isn't pulling the kind of power or the, or the grunt, as we call it, that it really needs to get us to wash it. So he's, he's actually trying to figure out what's wrong himself. He needs to hustle. He's got the big advantage of no dust. But that advantage won't last long. Here is Ivan Stewart. Started ninth. A lot of catching up to do. Again, the Toyota lightweight, nimble V6 Formula One race car, if you will, uh, with a Toyota body wrapped around it. But not necessarily the perfect piece for this racetrack because this is a high horsepower track. Look at that thing handle. We got it pretty sideways. Well, he really did. See, where we're going is uphill in a sand wash, and that really drags power out. The truck started ahead of him, Rob McCachron, number 21, has plenty of horsepower, and that's why you don't even see Rob's dust, is because basically, Rob's gone. Rob took off and left Ivan Stewart to struggle at ninth for the moment, looking for a piece of racetrack that uh, works to his advantage. But you want to see dust? Look at Robbie Gordon. Remember, he is behind Ivan. The truck start at one-minute intervals. And this is what it looks like back where Bobby Gordon is racing. Those dust clouds being kicked up by the preceding truck. And notice how he's moved off the line to try to get out of the dust. And he can get in trouble that way. He really can. In fact, at some points, you know, you just have to come to a complete stop when you can't see. How blind is it? Climb on board and take a look. Although, surprisingly, Rocky says that driving one of these things is a piece of cake. This car rides surprisingly smooth. Um, you know, you, you'd think an off-road truck, you'd be bouncing through the desert. I think when, when you guys go for a ride on the in-car camera, you're going to see that we're just kind of cruising along. Um, we've done a lot of work over the winter and developing some shocks on the thing, and it, it's working dynamite. No, that is not the first-class flight attendant offering a hot towel. That is Greg Till, the co-driver. As we pick up Rob McCackern here in the early morning light, started fifth, running fifth at the moment, but there's trouble ahead. Looks like an early interruption of the activity for the Herbs brothers. Well, when the Herbs are changing the tire, now, here's what happened is they hit a big microwave size of a rock and tore a tire right off the thing. He did it while they're trying to pass Marty Coyne. He got up, he got in that blinding dust and hit the rock. That's it. Obviously, when it's dusty, the only thing to do is try to go around. To do that, you have to go off the road. And when you go off the road, you take your chances. They'll change the tire and get back underway. We would anticipate fairly quickly. Flat tires are a routine occurrence in trophy trucks, although if you can get through the day without one, you significantly improve your chances of winning. The bad news is that four trucks got by Herbs during this tire change, and now they're all ahead of him. He's got to repass them. He lost his place in line. That's just devastating to your spirit on the very first lap of this long race. Imagine trying to pass a huge semi in a rainstorm. There's that point right up there by the back wheels where your windshield is just obscured. If you just stand on the gas and drive through it, you're okay. But that little bit of visibility is when you get in trouble. There goes, is that the Lewis, I believe, going around Raglan, who's having trouble, started sixth. This is a bad place to be limping. You're in a really remote part of the course. Let's get on the radio and listen to what Tom Gavis is talking to John Nelson about. So, Tom. Doesn't appear to be getting any worse. So we're able to go. You see how fast we're going. Yeah, just take it easy and get it down to where we can get somebody to you. Okay, sir, for The difficulty here is that, uh, as, we, as we see, uh, the Herbst truck go by up top side. The difficulty here is that it's so far to an area where the support vehicles can catch up with the truck, which reportedly is vibrating very badly. On board with Ivan Stewart. He's catching somebody. There's dust ahead. There's probably going to be Raglan, isn't it? Well, I imagine it is. And I see our helicopter up there in the screen, so it obviously is Raglan. Let's see what he does here. How he gets by him. Oh, he's going to hit him. <laughs> Bump trapped him a little bit to let him know that he's there. And Larry says, I'm sorry, I'm going to kind of got my hands full, moves over, lets him by. Here's another look. Well, you know, it, that's really the standard way. That's a very gentle little pat to say, hey, Raglan, I know you got problems up behind you. Would you please pull over and let me by? Well, they take the horn off, right, to reduce weight. So you got to use the bumper to accomplish the same thing. But there's still plenty of dust up there. Stewart is going to be dealing with that problem all day long. Marty Coyne started second, the high horsepower Ford, working out the suspension here. He's coming into this train trestle area. Now, this is an entry and exit point under the train track, so the, tra the race trucks have to go back and forth through here all day long. Oh, look at this. He's got the Simons right on his tail. I think we're going to see something happen here. The Simons definitely 
on the face here as they go after Marty Coyne, trying to get to the front and try to catch Jason Baldwin. Marty's going to run as hard as he can. You know, he understands that he doesn't have that state of the art that the truck right behind him does have. So he's going to keep a lot of respect going for what they're able to do. But if they want him, they're going to have to come up and take him. He's not going to roll over and let him by. So far, it's an all-board show. Marty Coyne's privateer Ford second on the road. Behind him, the factory 150 of the Simons and the leader, Jason Ball. You know how your car acts up to take it to a shop and that's just fine. He gets to the crew with the injector problem and it magically goes away. He's at full speed and leading in the Brim 300 in the Nevada Desert. We're back in the desert outside State Line, Nevada, the Las Vegas Prim 300, and this is Tim Herbst. Started third, flat tire dropped him way back in the running order, and in fact, he has fallen right into the clutches of the charging Ivan Stewart as they go under the Union Pacific Railroad crossing. Stewart is on his tail. He really is. Now, I want you to watch, Dave, when you come up to this railroad crossing, this dirt starts falling away. It makes it very difficult to, to stop because all the ruts end up getting a little out of control. Ivan Stewart started ninth. He's moved up to fourth. Meanwhile, here comes the factory Ford of the Simon Brothers with Paul at the wheel, blown by Marty Coyne as expected. Absolutely. Carrying a lot of speed. Oh, look at him stand that thing. It looks like a stink bug. He just put his nose so low in there. That's hard on the brakes, boy, I tell you. They're coming back into the start-finish line complex, which is actually an artificial, almost like a motocross course built for the fans. Going over the jumps. It's great entertainment, and you have to appreciate the weight of these trucks. That truck is a 48 and 180 pound race truck. Unbelievable. Look how he gets that air. Think of the forces involved here. Can you imagine what it takes to stop one of those things? Think of a bull in a china shop, if you like. Oh, he's got trouble, too. He got into some of the mud and slop there and missed the corner. They watered this area to keep the dust down. And he says, well, I think the best approach here is to just run the hole in the fence and get back out in front of that guy. Yeah, he did. You notice he paused to get an okay from the official that that's okay to do, that he wasn't causing himself a problem. And he did get that okay. Right behind him, on his tail, and on the gas, Marty Coyne. Marty thought he was going to get another opportunity to get back out in front. Here's Kurt LeDuc in the Jeep. The Donovy Jeep Cherokee coming through that same area. That'll shake up a load of groceries in the back. That certainly will. Donovy Motorsports is engaged in another effort that Kurt's behind the building, and they're doing some international rallying going over to the Baja de Spain and Morocco, and it's really something quite exciting for Kurt to be able to build those trucks. Here's Rob McCachran, and as he rolls into the completion point of the first lap, he is going to be the leader on corrected time. Now, remember that McCachran started eighth in the field, but will complete this first lap in under... 46 minutes. Even though he's not at the head of the line, his elapsed time for the first lap is quicker even than the truck first on the road, Jason Baldwin. And thus, on corrected time, McCachran will become the leader. Oh, Dave, this is fantastic. Look at it. We've got Robbie on the right. we got Ivan on the left. Robbie is putting time on Ivan. You're seeing horsepower at work. In with Robbie. He's been using Ivan the whole race to pre-run, and I think he's probably done with him now. Remember, Gordon did not practice. It's called pre-running. He didn't do that because he was off tire testing with his Indy car. Here he comes up alongside Ivan Stewart and hesitates there a moment as if to say, hey, Ivan, watch this. And then walks up on that big V8 and pulls away. Well, now you're going to see Robbie not pull too far away. reason is because Robbie's got a spotter in Ivan's pit to tell him if Ivan pits on the first lap. Because if Ivan pits on the first lap, Robbie will also. If Ivan keeps running, Robbie's going to keep running. Robbie's pits about three-quarters of a mile further down the course than the Ivan Stewart pit is, so he can do that. If he gets too far ahead, that strategy will go out the window, the bare knuckle style of Ivan Stewart. And there's the signal to Robbie Gordon, go left, as he waits to see what Stewart will do. Obviously, he perceives that he's racing Stewart here to some degree for the overall. For the overall, and if you take a look at the points, I mean, that's the way it stacks up right now. As Ivan's really in hunt. Ivan's the champ. Robbie's the winner. What are you going to do? Short track style into the motocross section, headed for the checkpoint. 
at the end of lap one, Robbie Gordon undefeated in trophy truck racing in 1996. Ivan Stewart, the defending series champion, now in pursuit of the big Ford V8. Now let's see how they do this. Go to the start and finish. Go to the checkpoint. Robbie's going past right about now. He's going past Ivan's pit. Let's see what he does. He's going in, Dave. He's going in. Stewart will pit. The command will go by radio to Gordon to pit as well. Here is the Toyota team ready for their champion and ready for his service. It's going to be a quickie, I guarantee you. No more than about 20 seconds. They're going to fuel him, get him goggles, and gaff him a drink of water. And then Ivan is going to try and get out and get ahead of Robbie before Robbie's done with his pit. No Look, tire change, right? No, no, they didn't do a tire change. First lap, don't need it, don't want it. Gordon, meanwhile, three quarters of a mile on down the road, will try to duplicate that service and get out, still ahead of Ivan Stewart. It's a lot like stock car racing, except the pits are a mile apart. Boy, I'll say here, Robbie's going to take on tires and fuel. The reason is they can put the tires on in the time it takes to fuel, so they're going to do it. These tires are big and heavy, 125 pounds. Stewart is off pit road and headed back toward the race course. Gordon waits impatiently knowing that Ivan is coming and wanting very much to get in front of him when they get back out onto that dusty race course. Here we go. Race is on. Boy, when he leaves, he leaves hard, too. Huh? Who knows? He looks like he may have gotten him. No! Stewart goes by. Let's see if Gordon can out accelerate him as they come back to full speed. You're riding with Robbie Gordon. And he doesn't want to get in Ivan's dust for the rest of this lap because then they're just too darn close. So he's going to have to use that. Look at this dust. Already it's blank. I don't think he's going to let a little dust stop him. He is hard on the gas. He wants Stewart. Let's go for a ride. Oh, man. I even knew that the sandblaster was coming. You saw him shielding his face with those stare hands as Gordon went by, slinging rocks and gravel. What a race. Look at that. In the score, Las Vegas Prim 300, this is the man on the move, Rob McCaffrey, the hometown boy, started eighth, leads the race, and here's why. He is cooking. a fast run, Dave. Unique air suspension in the rear. When this thing's parked on the ground, not running, it sits on the ground. And here it is at flank speed, unencumbered by dust right now. That's one of the things we talked to McCaffrey about before the flag fell. The track's going to be tight. I think it's going to be dusty. There hasn't been a lot of rain here in Las Vegas. But one thing we're going to be lucky about, there's been a lot of wind. So I think the wind's going to play a big part in the race. Sometimes the wind helps you. If it blows cross course, it clears the dust away. If it's blowing parallel with you, it can actually carry that dust cloud along with you. Right now, a great day for McCaffrey, who's leading the race, and for his Rough Rider Ford teammates. They are on a charge. With Paul Simon at the wheel, the Simon & Simon truck has moved unofficially into third spot. And here they are in a significantly rougher section of the course. Now, remember, free running was limited by the uh, land use authorities. Paul, how do you remember where all the rough spots are? My brain can't handle remembering everything out there, but I can remember the real bad ones. The ones that look like they're fast, but they're not, those are the bad ones. The other ones where you're coming into a certain type of terrain and you can tell something looks odd there, you're going to remember them anyways, and you're going to slow down. But it's the ones that are out on the end of a fast, long straightaway, and you've been running for three, four miles, tapped out going 140 plus, and there's a ditch in the middle of the road. That's the one you got to remember because that'll take you out of the race, maybe out of racing. Yeah, stakes are high at 140 miles an hour out there in the unknown of the desert. Sandwiched between those two Rough Rider trucks, here is the truck that is still first on the road. This is Jason Baldwin, second place overall. A couple of runner-up finishes last year when he exploded onto the off-road scene today had an opportunity to win hasn't been able to sustain the advantage of that uh, first spot out front well he's still enjoying the advantage of dust free racing though and that just has to be very very pleasing to him you know being able to see those rocks ahead of time is amazing for what it does for your timing does for your confidence in fact the whole team spirits just go up when you've got that free clean air what does a youngster like this give up 
to the wily old veterans, the guys that have been around this game a while. Well, he doesn't have as many of those all of a sudden stories. You know, like there we was out in front when all of a sudden. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Right? Yeah, yeah. Raglan has an all of a sudden story. Won the big race last year at the end of the year, the 1,000 to La Paz, and then all of a sudden the 96 season comes along, and he breaks the ball joints at Parker, and he flips at a movie trap at San Felipe, and then comes here and breaks the U joints. And the thing got flopping around in the drive train and tore up lots of pieces and parts. But now Raglan appears to be back in speed as he comes to the checkpoint. The bad news is he's completing lap one here in about an hour and a half. And that's approximately how long everybody else will take to complete two laps. It's a long way behind. Well, he's going to keep his foot in that gas as far as he can because he's running for the points championship. There's no question about it. Here comes Paul Simon. Ooh, look out. He is way sideways as he comes to the trestle. Gets the thing wound by flicking it sideways. You see how badly those ruts are dug out where everybody's been breaking for that obstacle. He about flipped it. Well, you know what? We're watching Paul Simon play 50 yards if I can save it. Just right for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, he knew the camera was there, right? So he thought he'd show off for us. Actually, I think he was in a great deal of trouble for a couple of moments, but he manages to survive. Let's make the point that he is on a very fast lap as he heads for the checkpoint. And this may, in fact, be the fastest lap of the race. Lap two for Simon. He's cooking. This is McCaffrey coming in for scheduled service. Now, now, Rob has had himself a flat tire out there. Notice they're hammering on that, Dave? This team uses knockoffs instead of lug nuts to put their tires on and off. And the reason is, is because when Rob's alone in the car and out in the desert, it's easier for him to change a tire with knockoffs than to try and keep track of five or six lug nuts. That's why they're doing this. He did, in fact, have to change one. Actually, just a couple of three miles back up the road, he got some help from the spectators, but the flat's done some damage. Well, it really has. You know, you can tell this isn't going to be any 20-second pit stop. They're trying to fix that brake line in the right rear right now. A lap two development could cost McCacker the lead. We'll be right back. back in the desert and look at the Simon boys fly. There goes Paul headed for the pits. He indeed did turn the fastest lap of the race on lap two. Led the race while McCaffrey had that problem that you saw before the commercial and now is coming in to hand off to his brother Dave all part of this pre-race strategy for the Simon boys. Since he's starting this race and I'm finishing he's going to tell me how the truck's working. If he doesn't say anything to me that means it's working great. I just get in there and I tell you what, on the, on the, at this race, we got to run hard. Right from the time we leave this pit, we're running all out. The good thing is the same co-driver stays in that race truck. So he's going to tell me as much as he can remember about anything bad on the course or tricky. And he's going to also tell me how the truck's working. Well, Dave and Paul had what appeared to me to be a rather lengthy conversation there, Bob Bauer. Does that mean this truck is less than perfect? I think it pretty well indicates that. Yeah, it is. He's got a vibration. When he went out to pass Baldwin as he caught him, he lost the tire and dinged the drive line. we think. I don't know. Uh, there's something going on, a, a vibration that comes and goes inside the drive line. So Paul has turned the truck over today, but it isn't as in perfect shape as they'd like to have. It. That's Paul helping to change that right front tire. Meanwhile, they seem to be having a bit of difficulty in the back. What they're doing is putting an extra spare on there. They did have that uh, replacing the spare. They had that flat while they were chasing Baldwin and so this is turning out to be a rather extended stop while they tend to the back of the truck and I'm sure for Dave Simon that is a significant frustration. I think he's done waiting. See ya. He's gone. Meanwhile Larry Raglan has a problem. He's stopped. Let's listen. Got a copy on John Ivan. Yeah you guys are going to need to come back around the mountain to get to him. There's no way. I believe, I'm not sure. I haven't got a full diagnosis, but uh, make sure you have every drop. 
drive shaft component, or you might need, and you need to head out to pit F, and then go up that power line road like I told you, and come around the back side. That Ivan, by the way, is not Ivan Stewart. It's Ivan Scopatone of the Nelson and Nelson crew. Their truck broken down right now. Not in the middle of nowhere, but you can see the middle of nowhere from there. Meanwhile, Robbie Gordon up to second in the running order is on the charge as he heads for the pits. Very patient, very conservative approach to this race for Robbie. Hey, guys, heads up. Let's go. You're absolutely right. Now watch, he's going to pitch it sideways to bleed off speed. It's not that he's out of control, even though it might be a little frightening. Patient, conservative, see? Yeah, so conservative. That's called Robbie conservative. It's kind of like a Mexican moment in a Baja race. All right, this guy, yeah. Uh, Loves this kind of racing. He's an IndyCar star, but he owns this truck. Built it himself. We talk about these things costing a quarter million bucks. Tell me about truck inflation. Well, the price is going up. It's up to about 385 in 1996. What Gordon paid to assemble this particular piece. It is, of course, a Ford. His deal is with Ford. Valvoline and Ultra Wheels, the sponsor, and he's back underway quickly. He really is. Uh, Robbie is just going to do a great job at this race. He's, he's come here with no practice trying to chase this guy. And uh, I tell you right now, it looks really good for Robbie. Ivan is struggling today. The series champion on this racetrack definitely gives up a lot to the big V8. Ivan currently in sixth spot if we go on board. Give a listen. I'd say that's pretty close to flat out. Uh, it feels flat out. You know, it's really kind of weird when these little small V6s, you can't tell what high R's are. Definitely faster than the freight train. Here's Kurt LaDuke. He's running fifth. Earlier we talked to him about how you pace yourself in a race like this. This is trophy truck. There's no pacing. It's give it 95%, try to stay out of trouble and stay in line. If you run 100%, you're going to get out of line. You're going to get out of line with a flat. You're going to blow a corner. You're going to have a close call. Get the car unsettled. It'll, you know, it'll slow you down for a few minutes so no it, there's no pacing yourself here it's just try to stay flat free want to get out there on the edge be able to see over the edge just don't fall over the edge uh, getting over that edge of caution in this territory it's a, it's a perfect example this is uh, an area of cross train this is where there's a lot of ditches highs and lows highs and lows and there's no rhythm to it it's very frustrating to a driver if you make a mistake here you get falling back behind the other guys you can't make time uh, this Donovan Motorsports team has done a tremendous job with the Grand Cherokee. Kurt has been able to keep it very, very competitive, keep the other guys honest, and only sometimes when he loses a, a problem to a motor is he slowing down. He's doing a very, very good job. The Duke knows a lot about these vehicles. He builds trucks during the week. He races them on the weekend, and he certainly helped Clive Skillen and the crew to keep this thing in very competitive form. Meanwhile, we have trouble in the pits. The ultra wheels forward of Marty Coyne is stopped. He's in for a driveline problem, but by the look of that smoke, there's more to it than he's letting on right now. Marty had a pretty good thing going here early on. Meanwhile, Jason Baldwin has climbed back to the top of the leaderboard. Remember, that truck faltered a little bit early with an injector problem, cleaned itself out, began to run a competitive speed, and with clear dust free running, Baldwin has returned to the top of the leaderboard. Those who chase him have been riding a bit of a roller coaster here today. Oh, imagine that. For $385,000, you can buy a trophy truck. For four bucks, you can ride the world's tallest roller coaster back at Buffalo Bills at State Line, where the finish line awaits, perhaps, for Jason Baldwin. We'll be back for more. Back in the desert outside Las Vegas, the score trophy trucks in action, and Robbie Gordon is in hot pursuit of the youngster who leads this race, Jason Baldwin, and the crowds here love Robbie. They've been watching him ever since he and his dad used to race out here in the buggy. Robbie's been racing a lot of years. You know, it's kind of odd to think of a 27-year-old as having 10 or 12 years of experience. Well, speaking of experience, here's a bunch of it. This is Ivan Stewart, the reigning series champion, who's been doing this... 
three years now, I guess. Behind him, we see McCackern popping up out of the dust. McCackern with a big B8, lots more horsepower, no opportunity to use it. Well, the reason is that we're in an area that's really rough and cross grain. This is the kind of stuff that really advantages toward the Toyota and its nimbleness and its lightness. Even though he's got a tremendous horsepower to weight disadvantage, Ivan's carrying about 11 pounds per horsepower. McCacker somewhere in the area 7 pounds per horsepower. If you can't see, you can't go. Stewart currently running sixth. Remember, McCacker actually led the race before he had the flat tire. That uh, did some damage to the brakes and the suspension. Ivan doing a great job here on a course that doesn't really favor his truck. McCachron, having been to the top of the ladder, now is reporting some additional problems. Apparently, the truck has picked up a vibration. Something may be going south in the drive frame for McCachron. Here's Dave Simon. He's running third after the long pit stop to take control from his brother, Paul, who handed the truck off in the lead. See what Dave can do with it here. Whoa! That had to hurt that left front tire bad. That's not good. That is not good. Dave. He hit a big hump and he hit it hard with the truck fully loaded on that side. It was really a horrible impact. Oh, now he's in trouble up on two wheels. Flips the truck. Simon has rolled the Rough Riders for a rough ride indeed. And I wonder if those two incidents aren't related. I wonder if the big bump that he took off that. Uh, off that little press there might have done some damage that ultimately resulted in this flip and left the truck lying on its side. Well, you know, you look at it and you can see that it's really a big, big S turn. We ought to take another look and see if we can't find out what really, really snapped him over like that. Simon and co-driver Don Teddy climb out unhurt and just what Dr. Bauer ordered. Here's the replay. Well, you see him coming into this area here and, and uh, the truck's getting light. It's a hard right turn. He bicycles. That means he gets it up on two wheels, gets it up, and he's trying to save it, trying to save it, but it hits this big bump there and actually flips the truck backwards over. It's like a, doing a full gainer. The thing was completely loaded. The suspension completely loaded on the left side. When he hit that bump, boy, it just bounced it back the wrong way and left it on its top in a very awkward position and on fire to boot. You got a rag or something? Give me your coat. I'll buy you a new one. That's a car right. fire, Dave. Doesn't really amount to much. I'll buy you a new one. <laughs> That's our, don't need it. Uh, never mind, we don't need it. That was our helicopter pilot he was talking to, Mark Fisher. I know what we pay those guys. He's not going to give up his coat for free. Here comes LeDuc past the scene of the mishap, and listen to that motor. Yeah. I don't think your eight cylinders working on that Jeep Cherokee. Not today. And that accounts for some of the complaint that Robbie Gordon here has had. Robbie's been following LaDuke for miles, complaining that LaDuke won't let him by. And LaDuke's basically saying, hey, it's a race. You want to pass me? Pass me. If you're faster, I mean, LaDuke says I'm not hard to find. <laughs> That's right. I'm the one out here popping and banging and making all the noise. All right, they're going to try to drag this truck out of the way. Crew members crash. Wait a minute, that's not working either. Well, they're trying know, to move it into a different position so they can tip it over, right? Yeah, yeah, that wasn't the, uh, we're putting it on its wheels, tug. that's going to come later. They need to position it so when they do get it on the wheels, it stays on the wheels. It doesn't roll off the hill. Oh, oh man, but it rains in force. Doesn't rain out here very often, but it is sure falling on the Simon Parade here at the moment. And Dave's starting to look a little frustrated by it all. It's Fisher, our pilot. Wait a minute, that's our pilot out there. That's Fisher trying to earn a little extra money now directing traffic as Ivan Stewart goes by the scene of the carnage here, hanging on to sixth spot. And no doubt feeling a little sympathy. Been there, done that. Dave, they're going to tie it to the top of the axle now to get it back on his tires. Trophy trucks are really heavy. This is 4,800 pounds, and they don't want it. They don't want to move. It's like trying to make an elephant dance. This doesn't happen. <laughs> well, at least it is right side up again, and uh, perhaps they'll get the opportunity to press on to the finish. We pick up the leader just coming down off that big mountain range, and that means stretch run for Jason Baldwin. You know, this is in the last, oh, 10, 15 miles of the lap, and, and you know he's got to be hearing every little creak, every little groan, every little click and squeak in that fantastic four that he's been having in front of the whole pack all day. He's been second a couple of times, but he's never won one of these things. He may have the opportunity to do it here today. Underline May. We hear there may be a problem. We're going to have to take a look at that in our next segment. But Bob, he's on a roll right now. Well, this run has got to please his new sponsor, FP Productions. I mean, he's just tickled to death to be able to do such a good showing. 
early in the season like this. 23 years old out of Newport Beach, California. Jason Baldwin shows his heels to the field as the score trophy trucks come to Las Vegas. We'll take a break and come back to see if he can hang on and win the Brim 300. Stay with us. Prim 300 is Jason Baldwin, but there may be a problem. Remember that this race course and the land it encompasses is all federal land controlled by the Bureau of Land Management, and they are very, very picky about where the competitors and their support crews can and cannot go. Early in the race, Baldwin had that injector problem. His crew, in attempting to rendezvous with him, went on to an unauthorized access road and score officials are considering what the consequences of that may be. For the moment, though, Baldwin is out front, flat flying, and really in control of this race because he has no dust to deal with. He has no dust to deal with, but I'll tell you, he's also got a number five car, Robbie Gordon, who is trying to pull some time on him because they've been very, very close in the last couple of splits. Gordon started slowly because he had not pre-run the course, used Ivan Stewart for a seeing-eye dog out there in the dust for a while, but now he's got the hammer down trying to catch this kid and deny Jason his first ever score trophy truck victory. Well, they've had two entirely different races, Dave. Robbie had to start in 10th position because he won last time. They invert the start, and Jason's had clear air all day long, so we're, we're seeing some very different strategies employed here. Jason also did it on one pit stop. No tire changes. Robbie's had two tire changes and two pit stops. This has been a very competitive, tough deal going at that same race two different ways. Robbie definitely on the pipe, on the power, as you see him swinging dust and gravel and trying to run down the leader and trying, more importantly, to remain undefeated in the score series this year. He's not afraid of that button, is he? Not at all, not at all. It's a funny big hole to fit that big Valvoline Ford through. Gordon on the power. Nobody's ever won three of these things in a row in the comparatively short history of the trophy truck division. This is the third season. Robbie Gordon has been an intermittent competitor because of his obligations to the IndyCar world, but he's still very serious about this kind of racing. Witness the fact that he popped for a third of a million dollars to build this truck. Yeah, I can hear that motor. Robbie has got the wig up. There's no question about it. He's looking for new time. He, he was pretty frustrated by hanging behind Curtis Duke for so long. Meanwhile, Dave Simon's rough rider Ford has lived up to its name, but it's back under power. My question, Bob, why bother? Well, you know, the, the, just in desert racing, you never, never quit. They're racing as much for points as they are for pride, and that's why they keep on going there. There's a finish line, and they're going to find it. If the thing will move, move it that direction, and that's exactly what the Simons are doing. Meanwhile, Baldwin is moving rather stylishly in the direction of the finish. He's got a couple of motocross-style jumps and turns, and he will be home with that baby. Ladies and gentlemen, let him hear about it. Jason Baldwin. Well, now he knows he's first across the line, but now he knows Robbie's out there just screaming to try and make time on him. He's going to have to find out what's going on. Corrected time is still the key. An outside chance that Gordon could finish this last few miles quickly enough to take the lead. Now, what's this all about? Oh, Dave, that's score officials, and they don't look like they're celebrating. This is undoubtedly related to that penalty. Here is Gordon out on the driveway, approaching the finish, and I guarantee you that's all that thing will run right there. What is that, probably 120 miles an hour? No, I'd say probably closer to 130, 135. This is a very fast Ford from Valley. Flat out silt bed. Here's your winner, or is he? You ran hard all day long and no dust. Yeah, it was nice not having any dust. We ran flawless. We didn't have any problems today. And uh, we obviously got rid of our jinx from the last couple of races. You know, you've been up in the hunt a long time, so this is the first time you've crossed that line this way, isn't it? That definitely. It's the first time I've... Uh, well, Robbie's still out there. I think we've, uh, I think we've got him, but I'm not going to count my chickens till they're hatched. But uh, I think we've got it. Uh, first time in a trophy truck is really exciting. 
Remains to be seen if that jinx is over as far as the score officials are concerned. As far as Gore is concerned, yeah, Jason's got him covered because Robbie started nine minutes behind Jason Baldwin at the gap at the finish, but eight minutes and 59 seconds. Robbie Gordon would have won this thing on corrected time, but we're now past that nine-minute mark. In fact, it looks like it's going to be about 9.30 as they count to the wire, nine minutes and 24 seconds. So the victory margin after nearly 300 miles of racing, 24 seconds for Jason Baldwin. And now blasting across the desert toward the finish line, a well-deserved third-place run for Ivan Stewart. Very respectable because the course really gave those VAs the advantage. I know we keep harping on that same tune, but, you know, you got to respect Ivan and the whole PPI team for being able to do such a fantastic job with such adversity. Tremendous amount of experience at work right there. He started deep in the field. It was the uh, ninth truck off the line, but he's come through the traffic, maintained his pace, and as he moves under the Union Pacific Railroad sign, that's going to keep Ivan Stewart in position to perhaps defend that championship. Rob McCaggan, the inaugural champion of this series two years ago, will have a trouble-filled fourth-place finish. Witness the missing sheet medal, just to one of the plateaus that he'll bring home. Last run. This has got to be kind of fun. One last opportunity to blow the cops out of the thing before you get to that checkered flag. Well, it's a chance to just cool off a little bit, flex your hands, get relaxed, think about what you're going to say on the podium, you know. Get your list of sponsors out of the glove compartment so you can be sure to mention all of them in the winter interview. Check your hat inventory, you know. There you go. It's all part of the racing game. So it's winding down here. LaDuke is going to survive his misfiring engine to come home with a fifth place finish. He began losing positions almost as fast as he was losing cylinders late in the race, and he's just happy to get this thing home without a train running over. All the fun and frolic of the Las Vegas Prim 300 has been brought to you by Toyota. Our minds are always racing. back as the score trophy trucks wrap up this Las Vegas Prim 300. Ivan Stewart headed barehanded for the barn. All in all, a pretty good day. Third place for that truck as he looks for the checkered flag and uh, wraps up another in the long and storied career of the all-time legend in this game. Third today for the Toyota. Not bad. Not bad at all. In fact, I think we got a bullet. Now, you know, the next race being the Baja 500, that's a race for this Toyota. Very, very well, year and year Ladies again. Gentlemen, let him know about it. So here's the checkered flag. Fire, but meanwhile, we've got some late race problems developing for the uh, Simon and Simon team that we'll document in a moment. But here's Ivan taking third place, and that will not change, but this will. Baldwin has been notified. His team has been penalized one position because of that violation on the course by the chase crew. Robbie Gordon becomes the winner the okay. unprecedented third straight victory. Rob, you started with nine cars ahead of you, and now you're there. Yeah, it's great. You know, um, it, it really, I, I don't know about starting 10th. We paid a big disadvantage. We gave these guys, you know, five minutes a head start, and um, it, it makes it very difficult to start back to where we're at because we're in the dust running into rocks because um, you can't see them. But, um, you know, these guys over at my shop, Dave, Donnie, Eddie, Doug, Walt, all of them are just doing a hell of a job. I mean, this car is just running and running and running. I mean, I, I'm, I'm convinced we could go race again. And I'm betting he'd be willing to go out there and do it. The Simon and Simon saga continues. This can't be more than a couple of miles from the finish, and they're stopped again, and here is the culprit, the smoking the rear end. Yeah, ring and pinion, gone, burned, smoked away, history, call it anything you want, but don't call it working. Hey, Paul Simon, been that kind of day, huh? Unfortunately, uh, we rolled the truck over, and the truck uh, been damaged pretty good, and uh, 
we lost some uh, uh, rear end grease and, and that results to the uh, rear end burning up and that's what we're doing right now is changing the rear end. We're two miles from the finish line, it's, it's just a long day. A frustrating day, a day in which they actually led the race at the end of lap two. Now let's hear from a third place finisher. Well, Ivan, those V8s didn't exactly run away with it, did they? No, they didn't. Uh, we know it's going to be tough. And long straightaways we talked about earlier across the dry lake and leaving. Let them get too far away from me. And then the last lap, I didn't have time to gather them up. But if we can get a third, I'd be pretty happy. Toyota ran fa fantastic all day. Ivan chases the Fords home. Robbie Gordon wins at an average speed of 62-2. On the floor, the Jason Baldwin, 62-3. Miles per hour, but Jason was penalized one position because of that violation. McCacker, LeDuc, and Hertz rounding out your top five. There's the rest of the running order, including the unfortunate Simons. After all the difficulties that they had, if you want to follow the score series, you can do it on your personal computer at home. Dial them up, www.scoreinternational.com. Complete information on all the teams, all the schedules, all the results of all the races. We invite you to follow the score series here on ESPN. For Bob Bauer, Davis Thane saying congratulations to Robbie Gordon for the unprecedented third win.